Yeah. Right. So we're at the top of the hour. We'll get started. And thank you for being on here, everybody. My name is Jack Carter, and I'm your host today. I've got two great, great people to work with and introduce you to. We got Fausto Pugliese. He is a day trader expert and day trader extraordinaire. And we also have Jeff Smith. No one knows commodities better than this guy. I tell you, I learned more about beef in 15 minutes from Jeff than I learned in 15 years. So we've got two guys, completely different spectrums in the market, day trading and commodities. So, you know, these guys are pros and the name of this show is Ask the Pros. So type in any questions you have in addition to the questions that I'm going to be asking them. Now we got a, a market that is kind of sneakily moved up on everybody, right? We've got the Dow Jones one point off of being at its 52 week high. We got the S and P 500 SPY that made a new 52 week high today. And we got a QQQ that's right at the verge of making another new high. So let me start off with Jeff. How do you see the markets moving into the end of the year? Well, and I'll, I'll actually say this. I don't know if you watch the uh, DAX or the Euro stocks, um, but the DAX has made not only a new year high, but a new all-time high. And so has the Euro stocks, 50. So Europe is uh, smoking right along. Um, one thing that's really interesting, if you just kind of pull up a big chart on the, on the SPY or the S&P, we're stuck in a range, Jack. I mean, it's not going anywhere. I mean, this yeah. thing can't go up. It can't go down. I mean, if you're on Fausto's side here, you can day trade the heck out of the thing. But if you're trying to catch a trend, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. uh, no. I mean, we, we've had a huge run. I mean, if you think about where we were back in you know, October, we've had a huge run up. It wouldn't surprise me that this thing needs to take a breather and correct back about 3% or so. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if going into next year, uh, maybe January into February, especially if we don't see the S and P trying to correct back down to the, you know, the forty four twenty, the forty four hundred area, um, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Now they might you know, bust a nut and take off, right? Um, but I don't know. But right now, I think it's a little bit overextended and need to take a breather a little bit. That's interesting about the DAX. You know, I, I don't look at foreign stuff, but all I've ever heard this year is how bad Germany's economy is. And, <laughs> and here it is. You know, they they say the stock market is not the economy, but that's just a great example of con yeah. contradictory information. Now, Absolutely. Fausto, going into the, to the end of the year, what do you see happening after we've had these kind of rallies and we're kind of top heavy? What do you what do you see going into the new year? You know, it's funny you say that. I was just on NASDAQ uh, with like all these big analysts uh, just on Wednesday. And uh, they were all, they, it, it, that was the same topic that they were asking us. So what do you expect going to the end of the year and stuff like that? It's funny, but all these economists had it all wrong last year. You know, they thought that we were going into a recession, everything else. Meanwhile, um, when I was on the month before, I said, you know, it was big earnings week, you know, and 80% of, of the companies beat earnings. All right. So the economists did get it wrong. Now, going into this new year, a couple of things I want to focus on. And everyone, I think, should be be very interested in this because, you, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about it in the next few moments and show you a couple of stocks on it. First of all, um, a lot of companies ain't giving, uh, giving uh, bonuses anymore. So that is that's not a really good sign. I think you you know all of us have done this for many years. I mean, Jackie, but you, well, we always look for a bonus when we worked as a trader. So, you know, there a lot of these companies are banking on AI and without bonuses, you might get a lot of layoffs going into next year. A lot of people are living off credit right now. You know, they're still stuck on that COVID free money stuff. And, you know, they pay all their credit cards down. Now they're being up their credit cards that, that's up. And then what's happening now they got to pay. The interest rates are higher. So credit card is at an all time high and they're just shopping like drunken sailors right now. So then when January comes around, you might see a lot of that happening. So the company, it just in general, what I've noticed, even with earnings, companies will find a way how to how to win. I mean, they go out of business every three months. And what that means is that they have to come out, they have to tell you how well they're doing. They'll do whatever it takes. They'll do shrinkflation. They'll raise a couple of pennies in here. They'll do whatever they can. But, you know, regarding about the Dow and everything and the S&P and everything else, it's all about the fabulous seven. You know, I mean, those are the ones that are really bringing up the Dow as much as you see. I mean, there are a lot of stocks I can go through and show you got got so destroyed, you know, um, 
but going into going to next year, I'm just going to be a little concerned about that. And one of the things I was telling you just earlier, and I'm going to show everybody a little bit more about it. Um, you know, I was never, you know, I'm never a big follow up cryptocurrency, crypto, uh, Bitcoin. And um, a lot of there's a big, big announcement that's supposed to be coming out in January. BlackRock is just coming out with the first ETF, uh, uh, ETF for uh, crypto. If that happens, a lot of these companies are starting to rally from it. And that means it'll be Bitcoin will be on the actual exchange. And, you know, BlackRock is a trillion dollar hedge fund company. I mean, the biggest in the world next to Vanguard. So that's supposed to happen within the first or second week in January. If that happens, I'm going to look into that. And we'll, I'm going to show you a couple of stocks that are moving really well in the past month and a half with due to that news that's looking to come out uh, that a lot of you guys could benefit from it because I've been, we've been trading it ever since. Mm -hmm. what what about uh i gotta ask you about interest rates jeff and fausto too what do you think about we're going to stay the same we're looking at a at a cut in the first quarter next year what do you see happen with interest rates jeff you know one thing that <clears throat> people don't look at anymore and used to everybody used to try to stare at a fax machine waiting on it is yeah. the money supply like m2 money supply m2 money supply and total money supply are at their lowest since the great depression don't know if anybody's noticed that. Now put that um, in the layman's terms. What does that mean to the guy on the street? Money supply being as low as it's ever been. <clears throat> well, the the thing is, is the the Federal Reserve, Fed funds rates, and everything like that. They are the ones that are basically our bank. And with money supply, if it's way, 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 way low, um, they don't have the funds and everything like that to spend. Right. So. I think that's going to go into the banks. Not only that, you think about this. If you go back to when we actually started raising rates, what was that, uh, October of 22? Is that right? It's in there somewhere. Um, so if we start looking at that, it takes, what, about 18 months to two years for the a, a rate rise to filter through the whole economy. Well, that puts us into right around, what, March, April, something like that. So that that's when that's going to hit. You got money supply low. And uh, all of a sudden, you start thinking about, well, if that's going to hit and they're going to start you know, cutting rates, are we going to start going into a recession then? I don't know. We, I mean, they've been wrong so far, just like Fausto was saying. They can't you know, throw a dart and be right. You know, they're just awful. So I don't really listen to the to the news guru people they're just as wrong mark is always right we've always said that watch the market it'll tell you where it's going to go but mm -hmm. i'm kind of looking at them starting to cut rates just because i think it's going to start weighing in you look at the jobs report that we came out you know this week the the thing that got me was we there's a jobs cut report they still cut forty five thousand jobs not only that with the jobs report this morning did you see it They've had 45,000 jobs in the government was part of that number. And last month, it was 65,000. Well, to me, that's 110,000 jobs in the government, not the economy. Right. So that's not helping out any, right? So we're only really creating somewhere around 100,000, 110,000 jobs. That's not very much. And you're cutting 40,000. So what's your net there? It's actually not doing too well. So, I mean, I think the higher interest rates are starting to, you know, really grind into the people and yeah. uh, into the companies. And they are kind of holding back a little bit and not yeah. really hiring that much. Oh, Fausto, what do you think about interest rates? Are we going to see a hike, a cut? What, what's going to happen in that first quarter next year? I, I, I think, I don't know, if after listening to some of like, like, I'm not like, just right. Like I, I, I was on this board with these people listening to them. And it's amazing when I go in the green room and talk to them, you know, how they, you know, how they try to be politically correct and what they can say and not say. But, you know, at the end of the day, I agree, you know, Jess, I, I don't think they're going to raise interest rates anymore unless something catastrophe happens. I mean, they raised them so damn fast, you mm -hmm. know, that it really put a, you know, a, a, a kibosh on it. And then by doing that, every analyst thought like, oh, we're talking about this recession. Yeah. Well, guess what? The Dow's almost is almost going to break all time highs. You know what I mean? Isn't like that yeah, wild? It's <laughs> yeah. wild. They say right? don't you fight know? the Fed. Yeah. They say oh, my whole career, 37 years, they say don't fight the Fed. And the Fed raised rates and the market's going higher this year. So I mean you're right. Every analyst 
has been wrong this year and not yeah. wrong once or twice, but wrong like all year. And I'm talking about some big shots. I'm talking some really well-known people in the industry that are like, you know, the big gurus, uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, some of these big brokerage firms. They all said the same thing. And that's what I kind of tell everybody what I do. It's like, you know what? They're looking at on the long term, they keep looking at these indicators and at these numbers. But when you look as a trader, like me and Jeff look at it, look at it every day, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know about you, but I've been seeing a hell of a lot more short squeezes than anything that's happening. So maybe everything's getting squeezed. Everyone's doing these shorts and then everyone's playing these options on these leaps and and they got to cover these shorts because on those options plays that are coming in. So I don't know, maybe it's just a big short squeeze that's going on right now. Yeah, um, that'll be that'll really be something. You know, I read where uh, uh, Burry, the, the big short guy, he's got a big short coming out on NVIDIA and AMD. And uh, well, AMD just came out with news yesterday. AMD did phenomenal. I don't know if I would short yeah. that because AMD um, is getting they had some what did it do yesterday? It had a really good move. It was up, uh, went from like 118 yeah. up to 130 almost. About a, they're getting to the AI business. And I, like I was telling you earlier, I think that's going to be the biggest concern right now is that the more and more you listen, what's going on. And I don't think the video, the video also, because the video is like one of the biggest supercomputers out there that actually build all the AI, uh, AI chips and everything. But a lot of these companies are getting into AI business. And if you, the more you watch and listen, there's so much you could do with AI, even in any business, even out business, even in cooking business. You know what I mean? But what is that going to do? Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs, you know, and, um, you know, the AI is going to replace a lot of these people. And that's, 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 what's going to probably going to cause one of the big catastrophes for, for next year. Um, listen, the most expensive uh, expense that a company has is employees, you know, insurance is ridiculous. Salaries, yeah. everyone's got to make more money, right. You know, um, liability, Right. Who's getting sued for stupid stuff? You know what I mean? Like Eddie will sue anybody and they're always right. You know what I mean? And so everybody's like, you know, the hell with it. Let me just let AI do do a better job. I don't have to worry about it. Robots are taking over. Even McDonald's is starting to come out. Yeah. Machines to make burgers. So well, I think employment tax is big, too. I mean, what's that for Climate every tax? employee? You got you got to pay tax on that employee oh. and it's yeah. about half their salary. So it's yeah. it's pretty substantial. AI is a funny thing. You know, it's creeping into all corners of our life. Even my niece in eighth grade gets called into the teacher's office wanting to know, did you really do this assignment? You know, was it really your work? That's only the beginning, kids, Jack. I mean, the way I, know, I, man. I mean, that kids was are going start. to AI to do my homework, chat GPT, do, do this math for me while I go out and play video games. Yeah, it's wild. Oh, my, my kids were telling me that they were in college. That's when I found out about last year. I'm like, don't you have these reports to do? I'm like, and that's when AI first came out, chat GTP yeah. came out and they were filling out and they go, Oh, I got an A, I got an A. And like, so it taken two, three weeks is taking them two, three minutes to fill it yeah, out. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, and it's a lot better than their original work. You know, if you've got a whole kid for in eighth grade that you've been in the same school the whole time, the teacher's like, wow, that's a pretty amazing project you did. But, did you really do that? Did your mom do that? What's up yeah, with yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, hey, I did it. I hate to admit it. <laughs> and you know, what's so funny. I'm just, well, I was just watching TV just this morning. It's just incredible how AI is. And that's what I'm saying. I'm pretty scared what's going to happen going to next year. And that's what you're asking me, my big concern about, about the market in general, because these companies, I don't think they're going to get hurt because if they could eliminate a lot of their employees, you know, of uh, expenses and they go to AI, I mean, they're just more profitable. You know what I mean? That's how it comes. But like now I was listening to things. There's companies out there for so cheap, you can actually get a home decorator. AI will be your home decorator. 10 times better than any home decorator. Um, is it AI out there now? I saw this morning, you could actually, um, let's say you're booking your trip and you could be so creative and tell them, so listen, my wife's a vegan. I want you to hear best restaurant here, best time to travel. Um, my son wants to play video games this time of the day. Uh, what? Who, who's got the best first class seat at what time? And it'll just shoot it out for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, really? So I there's know. a lot that you probably, you know, we're starting to realize that you're going to have to adapt to it. But the good thing to. is you could trade it. <laughs> yeah, you can. Now, let's go on the other end of the spectrum to a topic that's older than old can be. And Jeff, I want to get your take on, you know, last time I looked, we were getting the U.S. warships were getting shot at over by the Houthis. And, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the wars breaking out, secret wars are breaking out with Syria and all this stuff. And yet oil 
is doing exi- is the opposite of what it's been doing. So what's going on with oil, man? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, oil is kind of its own animal for the most part. Um, the if you look at just the uh, EIA, the crude oil inventories, just for this year, we're actually at a surplus of about thirty six million barrels. Uh, now on gasoline, we're actually got a little bit of a draw of about 3 million barrels. So they're really not producing as much gasoline as they're producing oil. Um, another thing that you have is we're actually in the United States, amazingly enough, producing about 13.2 million barrels a day, which is more than we ever have. So we're, we're actually producing a lot of oil. Now, remember when we were watching, you know, the CL contract, that's the West Texas intermediate crude. That's not Brent. Brent's what they have overseas and all that stuff. We have WTI here. So this, but we actually have a a huge surplus. Not only that, but I mean, you've heard probably time and time again that we keep selling our oil to China. We keep selling our oil to China, right? Well, China's not buying oil now. China slowed down enough and they're actually worried that next year there's going to be even slower. So there's going to be less demand. So if you're just looking at supply demand, quite simply demand is down and supply is up so you've got no cheaper oil now and if you what's really kind of interesting is you know the opec keeps no well i'm going to keep cutting our production keep cutting our production well that hadn't affected crude oil any i mean they're just like saying well screw y'all i'm going to sell this thing off anyway now the the one question that i haven't gone and looked yet and i meant to do that and hadn't had time to the U.S. is supposed to be buying oil down here to fill the strategic oil reserve. I mean, we went down to 68 bucks. I mean, surely they scoop some up there. I don't know. But I want to know if they're the ones kind of booing it up right now. I mean, they might have a whole bunch of orders out there trying to you know, scrape up a bunch of oil to fill up the reserves. And that's why we kind of bounced off that 68 and flipped back up to 71 pretty quickly. Um, that might be the case, but I haven't gone and looked, so I'm not going to say it happened or not. So there yeah. it is. But there I think is. that's your, your biggest issue right now is really a, a demand side of things. Demand is slowing down. Um, and it's not because of EVs. It's just because people are, I mean, things are expensive. Inflation's expensive. You got to eat, you know, and if you go to the gas station, think about it, you go to the gas station, <clears throat> I haven't, it's very rare to see a pump that's not exactly at 20 bucks or exactly at 25 bucks or exactly at 30 because they're going, I can put that much in and I'm good for the week. That's Mm -hmm. what they're doing. So they're, they're trying to save money somehow um, just because everything's so expensive. I mean, and and what's really what people don't talk about is think about it. I bet you your property tax went up this year. Yeah. 30%. Yeah. Everything. Property tax. Automobile insurance. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's a higher of. tax right there that people are paying that quote unquote, that's in my escrow. Well, yeah, but now your, your payment's going to be a whole lot higher. If you look at, go back to you know, 2020, 2019, and look at right now, the price of housing, I mean, for the same house is almost you no know, 40% higher just because mm-hmm. of the taxes and everything like that. So they're having to pay all of that on top of the food, on top of everything else. And so they're slowing down on their demand for you know, the gasoline and everything like that. So they don't have to produce as much. So yeah. that's what you're really seeing in the price of crude right now. And I don't really see it, you no know, bumping up or getting you no know, steaming up here at all. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't go back down and probably test you no know, 60 to 55 bucks. Wow. But that's going to be on a long term deal. We'll see what happens next year. If they start selling this market off, they'll definitely you no know, thump crude in the head. Yeah, we drove up from uh, Naples to North Carolina for Thanksgiving, and I couldn't help but see how gas prices were. We saw them down to two eighty four a gallon. I, I haven't <laughs> seen that in forever, you know. Yeah. So it just nothing's matching up. You know what I'm saying? You you read about one industry and another one and economies, and you know it's just it's just a really conflicting time out there. But Fausto, let me ask you this question: There's been a lot of uh, booming things happening in the day trading world what are you seeing in the changes in day trading these days well how has it changed uh, this this year well what's happening like you know getting back to Je- what jeff was talking about what led into the day trading a lot of more people like uh mary just got you know in the chat says the property taxes went up because of high value here in la county values haven't really dropped 
listen, a lot of people ain't, a lot of people working from home, right? So a lot of people ain't driving. It's another reason why supply is down. I mean, people not spending a lot of money on gas and not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, like I closed my office down. I don't need my, because my staff moved all over the country, you know, and they didn't need to have it anymore. And they were working from home. It's just easier. My son, uh, his job requires him to work two days a week at home, three days a week. He could work from home. He, you know, I'm like, how could they do it? You're a major company you work for. Why are they doing that? You know what I mean? But they just feel, you know, safety and whatever. I think it's better. So it's just COVID changed a lot. Another big thing um, that Jeff, you didn't, you didn't mention that I noticed also is getting killed right now is gas. Um, boil is getting crushed. You know, the stock symbol boil, ETF on it. I mean, because El Nino said that, you know, the El Nino is coming on. The Northeast is not going to get hit with a, uh, with a big winter. We didn't get hit with, with a big one last year. You know, we have one really cold, you know, burst here in, in New York. And that was around Christmas time. We hit, we hit about 10 degrees. After that, we get no snow. You know what I mean? And they're expecting another one. So they're going to get hit. You know what I mean? So the supply down is there. So what I'm finding, getting back to your question, Jeff, a lot more people starting to realize, and we're training a lot more people that are starting to retire earlier and, you know, and they need to make supplemental income before they were able to kind of like w live on what they made. And now like, you know, Mary brought up and how taxes are going up. We're talking about that. They know they have to make some, they have to make supplemental income and there's nothing easier than to trade today's market. So we're finding a big, more, more and more people between the age of 50 and 90 that, are, are, they're getting into this. They're trying a little bit of everything. And I'll, I'll teach a little, a little bit later. I'll, I'll do a little style and show you a little bit of my style. But we're getting to see more people starting to get into it and learning more about it. Um, because they said they got they have, they have no choice, but they got to make supplemental income. So um, that's what I've been finding a big change in. More people just getting yeah. into trading than anything. I know. I, I see it all the time, too. And there's a lot of different reasons, whether they want to get into day trading or directional trading or whatever. But it's 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 the cost of living that is really messing with people's minds and wondering, you know, constantly worrying, am I going to have enough money all the time? And, uh, I see it too. You know, people want to get into day trading or they want to look at different opportunities. And, uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there and it's good for us as educators to always bring this up. And speaking on that, Jeff, tell us, you know, what, where are you at with gold? That's not <laughs> something that I follow, but I would love to, to uh, get your take on gold and maybe you got something that could help people out with gold. <laughs> Talk about getting thumped today <laughs> is gold. Um, yeah. Gold uh, down 30 bucks today. Uh, the jobs report, I guess they didn't like it a whole lot and they kind of brought down gold and silver, but it's had a pretty good run. I mean, I can't say that no, it hadn't. I went up and made what a new all time high here just recently. So, I mean, it needed to kind of correct back a little bit, which I'm kind of glad it is. That way I can kind of buy it at a lower price, but I think overall it's going to be moving higher. Um, and I think we're probably going to be seeing probably gold and silver, uh, even copper, you know, picking up some steam here over the next probably six, eight months. Um, but we'll kind of have to watch and wait and see how that comes along. I mean, you've got a lot of people out there thinking it's going to double in price and triple in price and six times as much and all this stuff. Um, I don't know if it'll do that, but <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if not, I mean, over the next four or five years, we don't see 5,000 gold um, yeah. just because of all the cryptocurrencies and they're trying to you know, get rid of the dollar and this, that, and the other, they're going to run to something that has value. And that's the one thing that gold does have. One thing I love about, you know, even gold and crude oil and stuff like that, a lot of the commodities, I don't have to worry about who sits on a board. I don't have to worry about earnings. I don't have to worry about, you know, this person saying this or this person saying that now granted OPEC and you no know, people flapping their gums will move things around a little bit, but still I don't have to you know, worry about you no, know, what you no know, PE ratio and all this good stuff. Heck you just try to find the best trends you can. Um, one thing, if, if people want to learn what I'm doing with gold, um, you can actually join me this afternoon around three o'clock. Um, and I will be talking about uh, the new super cycle that's probably coming in gold. Um, so if you want to do that, you can do that. Uh, if you want to, let me find if I can. Oh, thank you, Adam. He popped a link in there. If you okay, want to join cool. me at three, you can do that. You're going to do a whole seminar on gold? Going to be talking about gold at three o'clock today. Beautiful. You know, with all this debt going on uh, in the U.S., it's just 
almost like a natural gravitation to gold. You know, people mm -hmm. want something safe. They don't trust the government. They don't really even trust the world anymore. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's probably kind of not, not just a safe haven, but maybe a good opportunity in there as well. Well, and the, and the and the big thing is, I mean, you look at you know, the price of gold. I mean, it's, it's hard to just go out and say, hey, I'm going to go out and grab an ounce of gold. I mean, there's two grand right there, right? Yeah. So, I mean, people just don't go out and just buy an ounce of gold just because there it is or go buy a gold bar. Wow. Now that'll cost you. I mean, there's 50, 100,000 bucks. So what people will do, they can actually leverage that by using like something like GLD. And it still holds gold. It actually holds it in London over there. Um, but you can trade GLD and you can still control gold. Actually, one share of GLD is like 0 0.0654 ounces of gold. So it actually controls gold. So it's a cheaper way of actually doing that. And if you like trading options, well, now it's even cheaper, right? Yeah. So, and you're an option guy, Jack. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah. I saw the I saw the Costco had one ounce gold bars, I think, on sale and they kept selling out of them. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you think yeah. that's just a, a well, little phenomenon it, or you think people are really thinking I might need to use this someday? You have more banks in the world right now buying gold than you ever have before. In fact, I just saw a thing this morning. The Bank of Poland has now bought, they bought 300 tons of gold to match their GDP. That's what they did. They and. They're trying to quote unquote catch up to you know the other countries in Europe and stuff like that. But three hundred tons of gold—that's a lot of gold. <laughs> it is a lot of gold. And that's just yeah. one country. I mean, Poland yeah. of all places. Did you I ever know. hold? Did you ever hold a block of gold before? Yeah. Can you? <laughs> it's heavy. Actually, it's got to be heavy. <laughs> it is. I did. I actually did. I have, actually have a picture of it. I think I have it on our website, or, or it's actually on my Instagram. I was in. Uh, I I was just actually with with Tom with with Tom Busby. We mm -hmm. were in Canada, and uh, the uh, the the Canadian exchange was there, and these guys had machine guns, and they let you touch the gold bar. Back wow. then, gold was at eight hundred dollars, so that was about worth like eight hundred thousand. Yeah, and you picked it up. I have a picture of it. Jeff, it was so damn heavy. Yeah. It's like weighing like fifty. It's like weighing like fifty pounds. Yeah, like, you know, a big thing like it's only like this big. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, if anyone ever bought, you know, take a quarter and if you see a, go a gold coin, you, you could feel the difference. Yeah, Imagine gold bar. But uh, yeah, no, that's the very, thing very about good. gold. It, it's hard to steal. What was that movie with uh, <laughs> Charles Borgnine and all those dudes that stole all that gold and it was too heavy? Yeah. I never thought about that, but that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Well, you know, in his, in his, the the thing about that's cool about gold, you can take an ounce of gold and uh, smash it out into a one square yard translucent sheet. It's very, very malleable. Um, yeah. And in fact, if you look at like the oil wells and the oil rigs out there in, in the Gulf and stuff like that, they would love <clears throat> to have gold fittings on everything because it can't be eroded by anything. The thing yeah. is, that'd be really expensive and everybody'd be down there stealing it. So yeah. <laughs> they're not going to do that, but no, yeah, but it is a, it's a awesome metal. Yeah, yeah it, it sure is. is. But, um, you know, the, there's a lot of digging for gold in the day trading world too, man. There's a gold <laughs> mine hidden in day trading. So, uh, uh Fausto, tell us, uh, what do you got? We got a lot of benefits to day trading. What can you share with the viewers out there about, uh, maybe how, how they could get into it and why they might want to do it? Sure. Let me uh, let me share my PowerPoint so everybody could see it. And uh, if anyone has any questions, let me just go over a couple of things and tell you what the art of actual day trading is all about. So the big thing that I kind of focus on, um, and if anyone saw me on NASDAQ uh, this past week, the main thing I talk about is just following big block orders. And you know, regarding about the indicators and everything else, I mean, it's focusing on the past, I want to tell you a little bit about how to actually use some of these basic inexpensive tools that you could use it towards anything. So let's go look at something really quick right now. So I was talking earlier about Bitcoin, right? And what happened. So there's a stock that we've been trading um, and I'm waiting on the news, what's gonna happen with this it, with this ETF. And let's look at Coinbase really quick. Now, Coinbase, just to show you what's going on right here, the stock just literally in the beginning of November, it's less than a month ago, had a lot of support level around $70. Look at it, look at the stock it ran. It ran from all the way from 70, all the way to 150, okay, like that. Um, now, 
it's obviously driven by news, but like, how does the stock go up so fast and so much? Like who's running it up? These are the little things I want to basically cover. Or another thing I want to point out is maybe a brand name stock that everyone's looking at. Cause now why are we peeking out or, you know, or everything? Let me, let me show you what's going on here. So Apple, okay. Big, big, big resistance levels at 195, right? Stock 195 came all the way back down. I want to show you something really cool about Apple, okay? Because this is what I'm going to show you next. You see this right here? It's called level four, all right? And if you look right here, you see this big red line right here? I'm going to move this over, and I want you to look right here. You see that number right there on the right, right where it says COB? That's a 389,000 share seller. He's been out there since 930. You know what just happened? He just got executed. And what happens when, you know how much money that is right there? That's close to about like, I don't know, about 80, 70 million dollars worth of stock. Okay. Not only was there today, if I go back, he was there yesterday. Okay. I don't know if I can go back uh, a bit further. And I could probably go back two days. But that you can thing see look that. gives you an unfair advantage, man. Well, listen, you know, you, you know how it works, Jack. Uh, Jack. I mean, you were a market maker. You know, we used to trade on Instanet. We used to be able to see where these orders are. So these are things I want to show you and how we utilize them. So while this thing's loading up, I'll um, actually have another slide. I'll come back to it. But let me let me go to the PowerPoint right here and show you what we got going on and how we utilize these tools. So just to let you know a little bit about, about how this, everything, how it began about me. I've been doing this for about 30 years. I love teaching people like you how to trade. A lot of you are all pretty much the same age that are here. And, you know, and you could see it that being, uh, you know, to trade today's markets, you just got to know how to play the game of trading. Nothing really has changed other than you don't got to be licensed anymore. You don't got to come to New York or whatever it is. But you do have to surround yourself with a good supporting staff of traders to work with. And you got to learn um, how to trade it. And by the way, when I'm done, I'm going to give everybody access to my book when I'm finished here. All right. So you all can have it. It's how to beat market makers at their own game. Now, um, let me just show you a couple of things that we traded and how we find these stocks that are moving. Now, as a trader, we don't really care what we trade, okay? We just, our goal is we try to risk the least amount of money with the high amount of reward. There are a lot of things that are moving in today's markets. We, we don't give out newsletters or anything else. We'll just teach you how to just go through the big percentage gainers and losers and just find out which one out of all of them are going to give you the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward. I mean, just the other day, we were trading the stock VVOS. It was up 300% on the day, traded 39 million shares. Now, the question is, is it going to go higher? Is it going to go lower? I mean, there are a lot of them out there that are moving. Now, um, but I'm going to show you in the next couple of slides, how do we know they're going to continue to go higher? Who's running them up? Who are these algorithms, these high-frequency trades? Because that's what day traders look for. Now, to do that, it all leads into one other thing, timing during the day. Trading is not a full-time job, just to let everybody know. Because, listen, me, Jeff, you know, Jack, and everyone here, I mean, Tom, we're, we, there's only certain good times to trade when markets open and markets close. Um, usually, the first hour of the open, the last hour of the close are pretty much the best times to trade. Uh, we do do some trading in the pre-market. Very rarely we'll trade after hours, maybe due to some earnings or stuff like that. But it's always nice to go into a market when this going into a market where people are still trading than going to market where people are going home. So that's why pre-market's a little bit better than after market. But usually the first hour and the last hour is a lot of action. Now, finding these stocks is not is is really the easy part. What you really want to look for and what really matters is where the buyers and sellers are located. So these are really the four main windows that you really need to have on your execution system. Now, I know if I ask everyone really quick here, you're probably going to say, oh, I have two of those, okay, which is the scanner and the chart. But some of you don't have something that's called level three and level four quotes. And I'm going to go over in detail about it, what they are, why it's so important, and how everybody here could use it right now and, and, and use it towards your trading. And it's not that hard to do. So let's start off with NASDAQ Book Viewer. So, um, Basically, I'm going to give you my email. You guys, if you want it, it's $15 a month. You get it right through NASDAQ. Maybe a brokerage firm offers to you. And I'm not here to make you go blow $15 for nothing, but I want to show you how value of a tool this could help you become a very good trader. So let me just get my crayons out here really quick. So I like drawing. And uh, oh, there's my little spotter. And they changed a couple of things here with this. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. 
Uh, there we go. All right. So right here, these are your buyers. And these are your sellers. So you have three columns. Okay. What you're looking at is a seat on the exchange. You are seeing every single person around the entire world that tra that are trading this business, any specific stock you're looking at. And what you're seeing is whoever wants to buy for the most amount of money is up on top. Whoever wants to buy for less money is down at the bottom. It's telling you how many orders there are, how many shares are looking to buy, and at what price. So the thing that why people get a little confused about this is because they see a lot of orders. They're like, well, it moves too fast. Or how do I know which one's which, which one's that? Well, only 95% of what you're seeing here is, is not necessary. There's only 5% you need to focus on. And the focusing on what I'm going to show you is these big, big orders. Okay, that's what we're going to focus on. So just be just follow along and just be, uh, let me just clear this out. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's talk about um, support levels, okay? Now, what makes a support level? Support levels don't exist, fellow traders, unless you have buyers out there, okay? You see support levels get broken all the time. So what you have right here is we're looking at a stock at Apple and you see how the stock is going down and all of a sudden it decides to stop right here at one $184. Now, why did it stop there? What made it stop at that number? Well, the reason why is there must have been some buyers somewhere around the world that wanted to buy a lot of it. And because that's a pretty fast drop in about 30 minutes. Well, if you look over here on the exchange and you go to the NASDAQ exchange, you'll notice that right around here, around 184.25, there's a 51,000 share seller. Just like when I showed you this one, which I'm going to show you next with that big seller out there. Um, right here is a live version of Apple trading on NASDAQ exchange. Now that big iceberg order I showed you, he's not there anymore. Okay. Um, he's on the level four, which I'm going to show you next. But the point I'm getting to is buyers and sellers get executed all the time, but sometimes they don't. And in this case, he wasn't. So if you're owning a stock and it's going down and you want to know, it, where it's going to plateau or where it's going to stop going lower, this is the tool that's going to help you do that. The same thing goes when a stock goes higher. Here you have, we're looking at GameStop. We were trading this stock the other day. It was had a really nice, good run. But the question is, when do you take a profit? And you could see right here, stock went from 15, shot up to 17.50, and which within a couple hours, which is a really nice profit if you own a thousand shares of that, you know. But even if you own half that, it is a nice profit, but you could have lost it all if you didn't weren't aware that out of the sellers, there was a 52,000 share seller at 1750. Now you have to understand there are sellers at every single price, 5,000, 15,000, 6,000. But when you start seeing a bigger block, which we call an iceberg order at 52, that's when you got to be worried. Okay. And you all have to ask yourself an honest question. How much better and smarter trades you have made if you were able to see those big iceberg orders, okay? Because how many shares are some of you are trading? A couple of hundred, a couple of thousand? Imagine knowing where the 50, the 100, the half a million share orders are out there. Knowing where is BlackRock? Where is Goldman Sachs? Where is the institutions? Where are they? Well, you have it right in front of you. Now, Jack knows this as well as I do because he's been trading as long, been around and did the same way. When I first started, I had to pay $1,000 a month for this data. Now try to imagine, tell a 22 year old to come out with it. The $15 you wouldn't want to spend to see where all the orders of every stock that you're in. I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? It tells you the truth. You know what I mean? So let's look at some examples that we traded this week. Okay, so let's look at a firm again. Because the firm's actually, it's been a pretty good stock. It's even today, it's still moving pretty nicely. But what's driving it up? What's driving it up is buyers, okay? And if you look here at a firm, you'll see that there are buyers, hundreds, 200 shares, 100 shares, 200. But the buyers are what make these stocks go up when you find a 27,000 shares. Now, you might look at it and say, well, Fausto, you just show me a big iceberg order on Apple for 500,000. Yeah, but when everyone else here is showing 100, 27,000 is about 200 times more the average trader out there. So every stock is different, you know? So you have to look at it that way. And by knowing that, 
when a stock goes continues to go up and it comes back down, you want to know why it's bouncing off those support levels and how it's making those resistance levels. Like right here, it's because of those big orders out there. Now, the same thing goes for another stock we traded today, uh, this past week's been doing really well, Robinhood. Mm -hmm. Robinhood had a really nice move. And um, you can see it here, it got halted, it got up, it got gapped higher. And the big thing of being a very good trader is how to have a game plan and know your entries and exits. And when you look over here and look at the NASDAQ book viewer, you could see, okay, well, where are the big sellers out there? Because there's always something that's called program trading. Program trading means where the computers have their orders defaulted to sell and put their orders out there. They have these algorithms to know where, where most of their orders of they own a specific stock at. And they're not going to wait for somebody like Fausto or me or Jack or Jeff to do it for them. So these systems do it automatically for them. So you could see these orders out there. Because remember, they're trading. There's 20,000 stocks out there they're trading. They own stocks and everything. So the systems are already out there defaulted to sell. And by knowing that that order was out there, and if you didn't have that game plan, and if you didn't see that on the NASDAQ book viewer, you can convert a nice little winner to a bad loser. And that's what you don't want to do. So, and it's all about not looking and counting the candlesticks and saying, oh, we got greens and reds and five greens and blue. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do about that 34,000 share cello is out there that no one executed that drove it down. Because what ends up happening is this. If that seller doesn't get executed, because that's what's called a limit order. Well, there's two ways of, of getting an order executed, limit and market. So right now he's got a limit. And if no one buys it to him, there's only one way out. He can hit a market order. What does a market order do? It hits all the buyers on the bid and he's probably the guy to driving the stock down. That's why it is so important. Now, that's my email address. If anyone here, I'd rather not send it you where to buy it because I want to give you a video so you could know how to use the defaults on it um, and show you how to how to lay it out because this is what it looks like. And if I take out aggregate and you start seeing this, and if you don't know how to add the filters, you know how that works, you're going to see all this. And if you have all these columns checked off and don't know which one is which, <laughs> you're going to see this. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, there's know, more to it than just going and buying it. You need somebody to show you how to use <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. You know I mean? Look what a difference. We go from one thing to the other. You know what I mean? So, you know, like I said, everyone here could value it. It's cheap. It's right from the exchange. It's not the Fausto indicator or whatever. You're going right to NASDAQ. But let me show you how it works. Now, um, let me just hop into level four because I don't have too much time. And um, by the way, I'm going to give everybody access to watch all the stuff, um, how to do it. Let's talk about level four. Now, level four is a little bit more of a heat map. I know Jeff always gets a kick out when I always come to onsite. He's like, he's the first guy in the front row. He loves this because you can use it for <laughs> futures. Okay. And you can yeah. use this also for crypto. Awesome. You could use it for, you know, it's it basically that data is available for you. So it's the shocking. way we use it. What's that? It's shocking. It's shocking that, that you can even get that. I, you know, you wouldn't, you, once you see that, you would never want to try to day trade without that. But just well, having it, that, that looks like an unfair advantage to me. <laughs> it really is. But the thing is, you could also use it for options and, and swing trading and all that stuff. And, um, and once again, it's not an indicator, it's a software that is just off the orders that are out there in the exchange. So here we're looking at like a firm, it's coming down to a big drop. And what happens, what's nice about this one is that all of a sudden an order shows up and you see this little red line. It's basically tracking it, you know, as as, as pr pretty much how a chart works. And all of a sudden, boom, you get a 50,000 share buyer out there and you're wondering, like, how did the stock make such a big climb? You know, well, it's because that order showed up and you could see it when he showed up, he canceled his order. And how do we know he canceled? Because he's not there anymore. And he's probably the person that ran it, ran it up. The same thing with GameStop. Let's go back and look at that one. GameStop stops going up. You could see that there was this big order out there for 34000 The color got a little bit darker, which means that somebody kept adding to that order. Okay. And, but the chart won't tell you that. The chart tells you we got, I don't know, maybe you, you use bull flags and bad flags, double top, triple top, bottom, I don't know, whatever you use. But 
All of a sudden, it got to that big seller out there at 34,000, and boom, we went from 1750. Now we're down to 1650. So that's how all this stuff happens, you know? Now, let me uh, let me go back to Apple, okay? Because Apple's the same thing. Look at that big sell. Oh, actually, I got it over here. Hold on, hold on time out. Do I have it here? Yeah, here's Apple. This was yesterday, okay? This is this is an image for me. So he says December 7th or December 8th, just to show you this is not like a, a fake photo. Um, right here is pre-market. This guy was out here, not one guy, it could be everyone around the world. There was literally a half a million shares. It didn't want to break it. No one wants it just, and you should know that. And if you knew that, you could have sold it at 195 and you could have shorted it and covered it at 194 and shorted it again. You could have traded all day. That's day trading. Could have made a dollar in, dollar out, dollar in, dollar out, dollar out. Now, what ends up happening when you look at an indicator, you're not going to see that. You're not going to see that in an RSI. You're not going to see that in a Bollinger Band. You're not going to see that in a MACD. You're only going to see it here. And now, fast forwarding it till today, that seller came back again this morning. And guess what? At 10 o'clock this morning, when it was at 193.80, it went up to him and it came right back down to 194. It came up to him, came back down 194. But you notice, you see these green balls? That's time and sales. Those orders got executed. Finally, he kept selling it to buy, you know, someone bought it. And now you're wondering like, Wait a minute, it's been stuck here 195 forever. How is it getting passed now? Because that half a million share order, which is almost $100 million worth of stock, got executed. So remember, how do stocks go up and down, everyone? Buying and selling, supply and demand. And you can apply this towards anything that you trade. Now, if anyone here wants to learn more about it, what I want to show everyone is I want to give, take the time to give you guys a week to be in the trading room and actually see how this stuff works. This is why Cybertrain University has been endorsed by some of the biggest brokerage firms in the industry. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years. I love what I do. I got a five-star rating on Google um, because of it. And the thing you have to understand is that a lot of you here, don't take this the bad way, but you don't know if you're really qualified to trade unless if you just if you just can't even follow the order. So instead of starting to go out there and making these big investments in these stocks, you know, because the last thing I want to see some of you is get stuck in these positions. You don't want to do that. You've got to understand, you know, how the game get being played. So what I want to do is I want to invite you all to the trading room. I want you to visit and see all our traders. We are we're there live all day long. We do live commentary from 9 a.m. in the morning Eastern to about 1030. And then we continue commentary till 230 to 4. Um, just want to show you really quick. Here's all our live traders. Right now they're looking at a stock COID. There's no audio going on right now, but um, you can see all the instruct, all the traders are here on the left, all the chatting. These are all the you know right now, and uh, but we'll do live audio. Um, like I said, at the most volatile times of the market. Now, all you have to do is if you have a phone, um, you could scan that QR code right now, or you can go into the website ctu.co forward slash trial, and basically what you're going to get is this for one week. Um, you're going to get some workshops. I'm going to show you how to set up your book viewer, your, your book map, uh, book viewer. Um, we're going to give you, uh, access to the train for one whole week. And all it's going to cost you is nine bucks. That's it. And then, you know what, after one week, if it's not your style, we'll give you $9 back. Honestly, wow. I don't, I don't need your $9. The $9 just tells me if you're a real person or not. Um, you know, cause there's a lot of people that will want to come in here, but we're looking for serious traders. And we're not going to bill you after a week or whatever. It's just it's just basically an application fee to let you know if you're re, uh, if you're a real person. And last but not least, um, anyone that does register now, if you do register, I will actually give you a free coaching class. You'll talk to me personally. We'll Amazing. have that conversation because I want to get to know a little bit about you and see if this is something will be a good fit for all of us. So before you make a really big investment into your time and your trading and your training. We'll take that conversation sometime after while you're in the room. All right. Now, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, we had one question from uh, Cyrus says, uh, Fausto, could you talk about gaps, why right. they happen? And uh, is there a way to predict a gap? So we had a stock that we traded um, this past couple of days. Uh, this just a couple of days. I think it was today. I think it was. Um, where was it? Hold on. So let me see if I can find a gap fill that we had. We have one stock that had a gap fill this morning. Was it ALTL, this one? Yeah, let's tell them what a gap fill is. 
Yeah, okay, so this is like a gap fill right here. So you see there's a gap right here. Okay, so what happened here was there was big resistance in ALT. This stock, we've been trading it since back in November. It was at $2.50. It ran up to a high around eight. What happened is there, this is a gap fill. What that means, it's an uncharted territory. So that means that nobody owns the stock at that price. And that's how you get these big breakouts. You wonder like, my God, how did the stock just take off out of nowhere? It, it was having this hard time breaking it because, because you had this order out there for 150, you know, for a half a million shares. And then because there's, there was no volume that was ever traded at that price because it opened at one price and closed at another. Um, it's what we call uncharted area. Nobody owns it. And that's how a gap fill happens. And that's how you get these big spikes in the market. But, um, but that happens once in a while. I won't be so concerned about it, you know, uh, worried about it. I mean, we get excited when we see it because we're in it. We're like, oh, we got a gap fill. That means it's going to fill in the gap. And they run. But they do come time to time. And they're also very profitable. All right. Uh, Ray has a question here. Do you know if Bookmap's subscription to Think or Swim at level three? Yes. Yeah, so, Ray, um, actually, I have probably the most popular video on, on Think or Swim is the Bookmap video that I made. And, uh, you could still get it on Thinkorswim. But once again, before you go out there and subscribe to these things and pay the $50, $100 monthly fee or $15, just take, pay nine now and let's go through that first so we could show you how to set it up before you go out there and do it. Listen, the worst thing anybody here could do, and I think everyone here is being a parent, would never give the keys to the car to their kid if you didn't teach them how to drive. You know, Let us show you how to do it because you kind of give them the keys to their coffin. Trading is a big failure rate. That's why we love being educators and we love training you, but you know, you got to learn before you can earn doing that stuff. But yeah, you uh, wouldn't even want to think about day trading. I mean, it's a, it's a great activity. It's a great way to make money. It's a great opportunity right now, but you would not want to do that unless you can see everything. And I think what Fausto just showed us here is proof. You don't want to do this unless you've got the right team behind you. And for nine bucks risk-free, let him do it for you. You know, and it's not just me. It's, to a new level. Yeah. yeah you got all not, those guys in the in the room. Tremendous. Yeah, you got all support. those guys in the room. You got all the instructors that work at CTU. We got John, Rich, Josh, Alex, Gra Greg. You got all these great people that love working for CTU and want to help you out and make sure you, you make the right decision because and it's not just day trading. We do swing trading, we do some option trading, but I always tell everybody you want to be good at that. You got to know what's happening over the course of the day because it trickles into that. You know, yeah. and that's how you learn like, hey, you know what? This stock looks like it is a good option trade. Maybe I will do an option, but you won't know that unless you know what's happening over the course of the day, because this is pretty much black and white. And most yeah. traders on the, on the street are pretty much day traders, you know. And it's only nine dollars. So go kick the tires, please. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Really, You'll really yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, that's you're going to love it. Uh, you don't have to do it all day long. You know, one, no. one of the things I tell people is w when I was doing it, I did have to do it all day long when I was a market maker and that's exhausting. But when it you is. don't have to, you can pick your times. You know, I think that first hour it's, you know, amateurs control the open and professionals uh, run the close. Uh, that, so Jeff? you don't have to do it all day, you know? Oh, check that out. That's that. That's an awesome that's awesome. an outfit. The time stays like 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 Jeff Jack was saying, you don't got to trade all day anymore. It's a part-time yeah. job. You yeah. know, it's yeah. it's you trade the first hour, the last hour. That's why we're here. We're able to have time to spend yeah. time and talk to you guys. But the mouse part. um, and depending on where you are in the world, you know, you're from West Coast, the East Coast, you know, overseas, there's always a good time to trade. But um, and and you don't gotta do it all day. Some people are in there, I don't know, once a week. You know what I mean? Like we're at our age, we want to enjoy life. You don't know, want to sit there, exactly. and, you know, <laughs> hitting buttons and play video. I don't know. Listen, I, my kids play video games I, sometimes three o'clock in the morning from school. I'm like, how do you guys do it? But that's how we were Jack in trading. You don't have to do that anymore. Younger. I was a lot younger. I had it in me. I, I don't have it in me now to sit there and stare at the screen all day. And you but, know, what's uh, crazy, Jack, when you and I traded back then, people don't realize this. And, and Jeff, you would know this too. We used to pay $20, $25 a ticket yeah, just yeah. to get in a trade. And then we had fractions. So a spread wasn't even a penny. Yeah. It was yeah. like $125, eights and quarters had a guarantee yeah. thousand. And 30 then seconds still can't and make stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Remember <laughs> that? And people still can't make money today, even at free tickets. You know what I, I mean? Know. So something's wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
a lot has changed to the benefit of the trader that people don't realize you had those clearing charges, which is what was the $20 a ticket or whatever, right. you know, and then, and then you had all these other fees on there and uh, you had it trading in eighths or quarters or three eighths or a 16th, you know, those fractions, you don't have that anymore. But what you have that really helps people is you have an expert like yourself and you have technology that gives them a huge edge. And that's probably having you as a mentor is priceless and having this technology, same thing, priceless. So spend nine bucks, find out if day trading is for you. And don't forget at three o'clock, we got uh, Jeff doing his gold seminar. So that's, that's your full day right there. Go to ctu.co forward slash trial, get in there for nine bucks, then uh, plan on meeting again with Jeff at three. I know I can't wait for that gold. There's a, uh, there's going to be some great opportunities in there. So yeah, fire I mean, off any questions you got for these guys before we wrap up and any comments you guys want to make. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, I'll read it. But Jeff, I'm also looking on gold too, because I've been holding gold for like five, six years. I wrote a thing down. I had it like 1300, wrote wow. it down to a thousand. I'm, I'm very impressed by gold right now because it's a, just like a trading. It's been holding there really strong for a while over 2000. Yes. So I do see a breakout that probably could happen. It's called consolidation. It's happening. So the longer it's been trading there, the better it is. But if it breaks that kryptonite, uh, I, I could agree with you. I hope I, I think you're right, especially with inflation and everybody else. Uh, yeah. Ray's question here is, um, does the one week then signed up for a year course learned so much from Fausto and his team? Sadly, day trading is not for me, but the education is worth it. The fact that day trainings do. Well, listen, you, you know what? You start. That's why we always tell you people, just do the trial. And then before you start worrying about signing up for something for a long-term effect, because it might not be for you. We, we train a lot of people from all different schools. And we always prefer you take other courses, someone else. And you should learn a little bit from everybody. Like you should be taking Jeff's class. You should be listening to Jack's course. You should listen to Tom's course. You know, it's it, you got to make sure it's your style. But you know what? You don't want anybody working for free for you. And you want someone's going to take the time that's going to talk to you and do it um, and see if it's something for you. Like you don't want to get surgery without talking to the doctor first, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Fausto, <laughs> give me my diagnosis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. T talk to, talk to the, to talk to the, the 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 uh the front office girl the girl at the yeah. desk she'll tell you yeah that's the one i want to sign up with all right so. hey i'm on with lance at one o'clock so i gotta wrap oh. it up but uh, if you guys good. have any any closing comments you want to share with our audience i'm sure they'd love it yeah well like everyone has said thank you very much for coming and thanks for having me again love talking on ask the pros yeah and love if i don't it. see you guys enjoy have a happy holidays merry christmas and happy new year Right on. All right, right Jeff. On. Happy holidays, everybody. Okay. Thank you for being on here, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being on, everybody. I'm coming on with Lance. Have a good one, all.